Hey folks, are mass power of sales actually going to happen? I'm going to talk about that in the latest home prices and insights for the Peel and Durham region for week ending March 15, 2023. So mass power of sales. I know there's lots of people talking like there's going to be tons of them. I know there's lots of people waiting for mass power of sales to get up and scoop up all the deals, but let's talk about it because we're not yet seeing a ton power of sales. I've, through my experience and working in the field and working with sellers, I, I know lots of sellers that potentially were in trouble. They're fighting tooth and nail to, to hang on to their home. They've taken on other jobs. There's families helping. So those ones, for the most part, are going to be okay. They're not going to go into power of sale, at least not in the near future. Banks. It is not in the best interest of banks to have a mass power of sales. And as such, we've already seen banks bending their rules, adapting a bit, and, and allowing people to keep their homes and not go into power of sales. The common denominator there, the banks make more money. Somehow, some way, by helping people, the banks always make way more money for themselves. But let's talk about the other type of lender, the, the private lender. Here's what we're seeing out there. Not in every case, but we've seen more than, than a few of these already. The private lender, once the, the homeowner goes into a power of sale situation, or they go into default, let's say, they're not yet in power of sale, but they're in default, the private lender has a choice. Do I take over the home, it's power of sale, kick the sellers out, sell it, and then deal with, you know, any kind of lawsuits and deal with the financial mess. Or, and this is what we're seeing more and more now, the private lender is actually taking over the home and becoming the new owner. So they work something out with the seller and basically say, look, this is what you owe. You can't afford to pay. You are in default. Let's sign some papers that what you owe where even the home is now mine. Why is the private lender doing this? Well, look, the private lender is a business person. And if they see value in getting this home at a discount, that's what they're gonna do. Many of these private lenders are very experienced in owning real estate and in having rental properties. So they will take this home now that they've got at a discount, and some are choosing to rent it out until the market is better or more in their favor to sell it, uh, and sell it at a huge profit. So they're renting it out to cover the cost, the carrying costs. Some of these private lenders are choosing, because they're cash heavy, they're choosing not to rent it out and leaving it vacant. This way, at any moment, they could choose to put it on the market and sell it. It could be a year later. It's not rented, it's vacant, and they don't have to deal with the hassles of, of a tenant trying, trying to sell the home. So there's lots of people out there that are very cash heavy waiting to take advantage of these situations. This is what we're seeing out there. This is why for now we've not seen any mass, mass power of sales out there. Will it change later? I don't know. But right now, that's the situation in the streets of in of Peel and Durham and the GTA. If you think this video can help somebody you know, pass it along. If you get value from this video, subscribe. Let's get into the numbers. If you want to speak with me about your real estate situation, it's really simple. Below this video, in the description, there's a link to my calendar. Click on that, book a time that's convenient for you. This way, I'll know ahead of time and I'll make sure my schedule's organized so we can talk about whatever's on your mind. And just to follow up a little bit more on what I was saying before the introduction, you know, power of sale. Losing a home through power of sale is a financially devastating thing to happen and it's extremely traumatic. Most people will fight tooth and nail 
to hold on to their homes. And as far as mass power of sales go, I believe we're going to see more power of sales than we maybe normally would. And I think most people are on board with that. But mass power of sales, I, I'm not so sure about that. You let me know what you think in the comments below. Let's get into the numbers. Here we have a, just a quick summary. These are average sold prices for detached properties only. In red, we have for Durham. Green is Brampton and the blue is Mississauga. Durham and Brampton, one week to the next, both went up and Mississauga came down for average sold prices. That's a quick summary. We're going to start off with Mississauga. Again, detached properties only, broken down by week for a whole year. 45 detached properties were sold in the city of Mississauga for week ending March the 15th. Sales have been going up almost on a weekly, well, Actually, yeah, on a weekly basis, sales have been going up. Four of those properties, four out of the 45 sold at $2 million or more. Average sold price is $1,419,000. Average sold price in the last, well, this year, we'll say, peaked at 1.6, but it's been coming down basically ever since to, again, now we're at $1,419,000 which is 14% lower than where the average sold price was a year ago. Now, if we're comparing to last year, which, you know, the most important number is really what's now what's happening and what trend are we on now today. However, we compare to last year just for comparison's sake and if you're a, a long-term investor or if you're just curious of what the market's doing one year to the next, we track the change that way. Well. Earlier in the year, we were 30%, 29%, 34% lower than last year's average sold price. But earlier in the year, last year, that's when we were at our peak. It's now March, middle of March. Compared to last year, at this time, we're, we're now on the decline as far as prices go. We're past the peak, and that's why we're no longer... 29 and 30% lower than last year's average sold price. We're now in the low 20s and 14% lower than last year's average sold price. The median price of 1,380 is 15% lower than where the median price was last year. The dotted line, that's a four week moving average. And if we're looking at trends, both for average price and median price, since basically since the beginning of the year both prices were going up but for the last three weeks or so they've been kind of flat that's the average price and the medium price for mississauga sales earlier in the, a few weeks ago we were way off the pace of what we were selling last year we're a lot closer this week than what we were in the previous weeks and 38% of those 45 properties that did sell sold at list price or more. Listings, 85 detached properties were listed and months of inventory is sitting at 1.6 months of inventory, which is lower, very much in a seller's market when it comes to Mississauga detached properties. And although months of inventory has come down since the beginning of the year, it's for the last few weeks, kind of been pretty flat, not much movement. Days on market, however, went from 18, 20 to 17. Last week, the average days on market was only 10. Pretty low. Here's Brampton. 66 detached properties were sold in Brampton. Two of those were at $2 million or more, and average sold price is sitting at 1,217,000. I drew a line across here. Average sold price has been pretty much the same since the end of January, hovering around the $1.2 million mark. There hasn't been much movement, but sales have been increasing over the last few weeks. 1,217,000 is 23% lower than where the average sold price was a year ago. And just to take a snapshot in time, this year, for week ending March 15th, two properties were sold at $2 million or more. Same time last year, 
21 properties were sold at $2 million or more. The market has changed in Brampton in a big, big way. Median price is 20% lower than where the median price was a year ago. Median price for Brampton is $1,166,000. And the median price is basically this year. It's gone up and now starting to slope down. The average sold price over the last four, five, six weeks has pretty much been flat. Sales, similar to Mississauga, we've been way off the pace since the beginning of the year, but I, I wouldn't even say we're close to what we were doing last year. We're still, it's closer, but we're way off the pace of what we were selling last year. And 36% of the properties sold in Brampton, these are the detached properties, are being sold at list price or more. Listings, I, I put a note here, where are all the lists? Sometimes I just write down what I'm thinking. Where are all the listings? Uh, 102 detached properties were listed in Brampton, way, way off the pace of what we were listing last year at this time. Months of inventory sitting at 1.5. Average days on market has come down to 15. In general, months of inventory has been declining over the last eight weeks or so. Here's Durham. Now for Durham, I'm using uh, Ajax, Pickering, and Whitby as my Durham sample. 49 detached properties were sold, which is what we sold the previous week. One of those was at $2 million or more. For the last three weeks, average sold price has been increasing. For week ending March 15th, average sold price is $1,185,000. 1185 is 15% lower than where the average sold price was a year ago. Median price of 1.1, sorry, 1,180,000 is 13% lower than where the median price was a year ago. And both for medium and average sold price, we basically, since the beginning of the year, it's been the opposite of what's happening in a lot of other regions. Median price has been coming down and now and average price also coming down and now starting to go up a little bit. This is the trend in the Durham region. Of the 49 that sold, 47%, close to half sold at list price or more. 59 were listed. Listings are actually coming down in the Durham region. I put a question mark there like, what's going on? How come nobody wants to list their properties? And months of inventory is extremely low sitting at 0 0.6 months of inventory. It's been extremely low for the last three weeks. I mean, even prior to that, I mean, this is how we're getting, I guess, we're, we're getting re-brainwashed re here. 1.3 is already considered, it's really low months of inventory. But when we see 0 0.6 and 0 0.7, 1.3, which is double, kind of seems like it's high. It's not. 1.3 is low, 1.2 is low, 1.4 is low, but I guess not as low as 0 0.6, and that's where we've been over the last three weeks. Average days on market, uh, uh, average days on market in the Durham region is 12. Peel region condos. 41 condos were sold. One of those was at $1 million or more. Average sold price is 615,000. 615 is 15% lower than where the average sold price was a year ago. Uh, the median price of 570 is 19% lower than where the median price was a year ago. And both average price and median price have been increasing over the last few weeks, but only slightly. It's not an aggressive increase, but they have been trending upwards. 41 detached were sold, 70, sorry, these are condos, Peel Region condos, 41 Peel Region condos were sold. Let me do that again. 41 condos were sold in Peel Region, 17% of those sold at list price or more, and we could see the percentage selling at list price or more declining over the last four weeks. 77 condos were listed, the amount of listings of condos is declining. And again, I'm wondering where are all the condo listings? We're heading in the spring. We're supposed to see lots of activity, 
so far is not materializing. 1.8 is the months of inventory and average days on market for condos is 24. Here's a, a quick summary of where we are with months of inventories for the different regions and the, the, the different home types between detached and condos. Balanced market is way over here between four to six months. We're nowhere near a balanced market. Uh, I, I know when you're experiencing the fact that you know sometimes you can negotiate and you feel confident that maybe you're buying at a good price compared to what it used to be but technically right now we are still in a we are in a seller's market this is why you're seeing multiple offer situations this is why you're seeing sellers kind of confident in having an offer date it's because we're in a seller's market thanks for watching have a great day